Hello everyone, what's up? So today I wanted to discuss why we have a coefficient of a half in the third term of the quadratic approximation formula, okay? So up here I have the quadratic approximation formula and I want to show you where these two comes from, okay? Now this is not going to be formal proof at all. I just want to give you a bit of intuition into the, you could say, the utility or why it's useful to have these, these two uh, down here, okay? This is not going to be a proof, this is not going to be a derivation of this term, for instance, but rather it's just simply going to be an example of why these two is very important to have, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's do it. So now I want to ask you the, the, um, the, this question. What is the quadratic approximation of a parabola? Well, if we want to approximate a parabola near any point, the best approximation for that is going to be the parabola itself, okay? So uh, let's do the following. I want to ask what is the quadratic approximation of the parabola uh, ax squared plus b times x plus c, okay? So now this is going to be a quadratic polynomial. This is just going to be a polynomial, and it's going to give us a parabola, okay? Now, what is the quadratic uh, denotation that I'm using is q to define the quadratic approximation of any function that you want. You're going to understand what q means in a moment, but for now, uh, just understand that this is a polynomial and this will give us a parabola. So now I want to define uh, f of x. So I'm going to say that f of x will be our, our polynomial. So we have ax squared plus b times x plus c. Now, uh, if we want to find the quadratic approximation of f, which is this polynomial, well, we can do the following. This is going to be approximations near x equals zero. I forgot to mention that. Uh, usually in math, we like to keep things simple. And if we define, if we let x not be equal to zero, that is, we want to find approximations near x equals zero. Well, then uh, we get a very simple formula to deal with. Okay, so uh, so yeah, these approximations are going to be near x equals zero. So now, if we have near um, approximations near x equals zero, we know the first term is going to be f of zero. So we have over here we have uh, f of zero plus. Now we have uh, the derivative of the function evaluated at zero. So we have f prime evaluated at zero times x. In this case, we would have x minus x naught, x naught equals zero. So you just get x plus, and now we have our quadratic term, which is gonna be f double prime of zero times x squared. We, uh, this would be uh, you know, a binomial, however, x, x naught equals zero. So you just get x squared over two, okay? So now this is the quadratic approximation formula near x equals zero for any function. And in this case, well, we define f to be our polynomial. So now let's find uh, these particular values for f and then plug them into this, uh, into this expression. So we know f of zero, that's very simple. We're, that is just simply gonna be a, a, a s, uh, s now, I'm sorry, c. So we have f of zero, that is just gonna be c. And now what about f prime? Well, we know f prime of zero. So what is the derivative of this? We know a quadratic function will give us a linear function. So c disappears, it's a constant, it goes to zero. The derivative of bx, uh, well, x, the der its derivative equals one, so you just get b, and then you have two ax, okay? This is the power rule, you just move two to the front. So we know that this is going to be uh, two a times x, we know x equals zero, so it's going to be two a times zero, plus b, remember b is not going to have any, any variable, so it's just going to be b, so we get b. And now what about the second derivative of f? Well, we know we can write uh, f double prime evaluated at zero. So now we know that the derivative was 2a times x plus b. The derivative of this expression is just going to be this slope of, our, of this linear function, which is going to be 2a, okay? So this, uh, the second derivative of our parabola is just going to be constant, okay? It's going to be a line, so it's going to be 2a, okay? Whatever a is, well, that's it. So now we can plug these values into this form and see how much we get. So let's do that. So we know we have f of zero, that is gonna be c. Now, what if we have f prime of zero? Well, we know f prime of zero is gonna be, so this term goes to zero and we get b, and we have f prime of zero times x, so we have b times x. And now here comes uh, why we need this two over here. So you can see that f double prime of zero, well, it's gonna be two a, so I'm gonna write it like this. We have two, uh, we have two a times x squared. And now remember that at the beginning I said that the best quadratic approximation for a parabola is gonna be the exact same parabola. It's gonna be the parabola itself. You can see that over here, well, we have the exact same quadratic function that we had at the beginning, but we have a coefficient of two 
um, in the living term, okay, which is going to be ax squared. The only way in which you can get rid of this uh, coefficient of two is by dividing by is, is by dividing by two this term over here, okay. And that is why, well, this two is very helpful to have. So you can do simply, which is going to be this two over here, okay. So we know f double prime of zero is going to be two a times x squared, and we need to, well, we need to return to a x squared instead of two a x squared. So we can just simply divide by two, okay. And well, this is uh, this is not really the proof to show where this two comes from, but this is just one of the reasons why that two is correct to have, okay. It is a very, well, it's a trivial idea to say that the quadratic approximation of a parabola is going to be the parabola itself. That's a very fundamental truth that we can accept. And based on that, well, we can just show that we need to have these two down here, okay? So, well, it, may, it makes sense to have these two down here so that we can, you know, we can satisfy that idea that the best approximation for a parabola is the parabola itself, okay? So, uh, yeah. That has been everything. I hope that this video has given you some intuition into why we have this coefficient in here. This is not a proof, as I said. This is not a derivation, but just some intuition, you know, so just so that you can develop, you can become more familiar with this formula over here, okay? And you can understand why these two comes from, okay? So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. You learned something. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.